What's up guys, Aaron here with Navy Astronomy. Finally made my way down to St. George Island yet again. Hopefully catch some good weather while we're here for the week. And if weather permits, I plan on doing at least one target, if not a couple. I've got a awesome fisheye lens that I plan on using on the Milky Way. I'll also be using my 100 millimeter macro lens to try and capture something up a little bit closer. So what's awesome about this spot I'm in the Gulf, so right here, pretty much across here, I've got a clear, unobstructed view of the Southern Milky Way. And this area has very little light pollution, so over the ocean, it's like Mortal 2. So some of the best imaging I've, I've done. And that's my brother-in-law. <laughs> All right, guys, so needless to say, the week of planned imaging I had at St. George did not work out nearly how I thought it would. In fact, it, it was almost a horrible disaster. My Skywatcher Star Adventurer Pro failed. The uh, motor was stalling, it would not track. I tried all kinds of troubleshooting. Eventually I had to reach out to Skywatcher and turns out it needs service which is really disappointing because I've only had it just over two years. So it's outside of warranty, number one. And number two, I've only used it a handful of times. So the fact that this thing is already bugging out like this was really disappointing. And it really had me bummed out because I had, I had some nice, you know, targets planned while I was down at the beach. Um, I had almost given up, but the last day remained clear and I figured, why not just try and do something with a simple setup with the DSLR on a tripod? No tracker needed. So that's what I did. And I'm pretty pleased with what I was able to capture. And I thought this would make a great video to show that even with just a digital SLR, it can be modified or non, just a standard DSLR on a tripod, with the right settings and with decent lighting conditions, you can still take some pretty awesome astro images. So without any further delay, let's take a closer look on the computer on how I process this image, and then I'll show you the final image. So this is Deep Sky Stacker. This is the software you'll be using to stack all of your images. So what you want to do is open up your file where you got your images stored, get those selected, I'm going to sort these by type, so just make it easier for the selection. And then just get these all selected here and load these up. Okay, so you got your files loaded into Deep Sky Stacker. So we don't have any calibration frames. We're just going to be sticking with light frames on this. So what you want to do is check all and then click register check pictures, but we don't want to stack them right away. We want to get them registered first. So under stacking parameters, we're just going to leave that at default. We want it going to a TIFF and then under recommended settings, it's going to tell you some options, you know, if you were using other calibration frames. But the important thing here is the advanced tab. You want to make sure that you're getting a good number of stars detected. So you'll have to play around with this slider for me on this one is about 36%. So 116 stars, that looks pretty good to me. We're gonna roll with that and it'll start registering. So now that all the images are stacked, you're going to look at this score here. And you want to generally use the highest scoring frame as your reference frame. But let's drag this slider over and take a look at the image. There you go. That's a single image raw out of the camera. <laughs> look at this distortion from the fisheye lens I used. I didn't go full fisheye because I just wanted it framed up a little differently but you still have some very heavy distortion. It's kind of cool, I, I kind of like it. 
But anyway, so I'm gonna set this frame, and I've already checked these before, but you can click on each individual frame. But I always go with the highest scoring one, and if you right click on that frame, you can use as reference frame, and there it is. So it will stack every other frame to this frame, okay? And you just go over here to stack checked pictures, hit OK, and boom. And with this particular target, I only I had 41 images. It was only 10, almost 11 minutes of data. And I think you'll be pretty surprised to see how smooth and clean the image came out. So that's what you're going to want to do. Go ahead and get that stacked. And then we will jump into Photoshop and move forward to the next step. So once you've opened up Photoshop, you're going to want to pull up that stacked TIFF file. Okay. And here it is. First thing I do is duplicate the layer, Control J, and then do a stretch, Control M. I like the arc sign stretches, um, but you could just do a manual stretch on the curve bar here. But I, I like using the arc sign. Let's start with an arc sign 30. There we go. And let's pull up the level slider, Control L, and let's move this slider over, brighten this up a bit. There we go, just one simple stretch there, and we're already looking a lot better from the previous image. <laughs> All right, so I like that. Let's stamp this forward, Control, Alternate, Shift, E. That stamps that layer forward. And let's pull out the light pollution. So what we're going to do is we're going to color sample the background find the eyedropper here we go eyedropper and this is about and I have this on sample size 11 by 11 all layers and that samples the color and then if you do alternate backspace it will make a flat image of that color and then you click on the layer below go to image apply image Go to subtract, and it's going to subtract that from that layer below. And I usually do an offset of about 25. You can play around with this to your liking, but I find for me that works pretty well. So if we untoggle this layer, boom, there it is. Light pollution's gone. All that muddy brown light pollution no longer there. So what we can do is click on this layer and just drag and drop that to the trash can. And now we've got this nice clean image. And just to show you real quick how powerful dithering is. As I said before, there are no dark frames, flats, bias, anything stacked with this. This is just the light frames stacked together. But look how clean this data is. There's, there's no noise. I mean, it's pretty much noise free. That's only 10 minutes of data. And... Uh, stacked but I, I used a very heavy manual dithering and what I did was is I just made what were fairly slight adjustments but were probably hundreds of pixels wide adjustments to the frame so I still had the same general framing right of this image but after I would take an image I would loosen the ball head and adjust that frame by a couple hundred pixels in a random direction. And I did that for 40 frames. And this is the result. When you stack like that, it's pretty much noise free. Like there's no color noise, there's no uh, luminance noise. It's a very clean image. And this was while shooting at ISO 3200 on an uncooled camera. So it is a very powerful technique. I'm a big believer in it use dithering it's very easy to manual dither with a tripod and a camera but if you have a tracking mount definitely incorporate dithering into your imaging plan even with a cooled camera anyway that's my two cents on dithering highly recommend it so here we have what's already looking pretty good here right so let's go into camera all filter i love this plug-in 
and here you can play around with some sliders to boost contrast, maybe even exposure a little bit. Not too much on exposure. I really don't like playing around a whole lot with that. We use stretching to bring out detail, right? Clarity, maybe some vibrance, just a little more color, a little more saturation. And boom, another improvement. Let's maybe do one more curves adjustment, control M. And let's just do a manual adjustment this time. Let's bring that slider up to brighten it. There we go, right about there. And we're gonna pull that down just a little bit for contrast. Hit okay, now look at, well, and then hit okay. And that's really about all the editing I did on this. It's a, you know, editing pictures like this is very simple. And when you've got clean data like this, there's not a whole lot of correction you need to do with, with regard to noise. Um, yeah, look at that. You got Ro Ophiocus right here, Lagoon Nebula and Trifid, some really awesome targets. But that's really about all I do here. I, the only other thing I would do is crop out some of the stacking artifacts a little bit there. And there we go, all the stacking artifacts that were in the edge are gone. Now, some people would prefer to have this sharp, the foreground image, and you can certainly do that. Uh, one way is to take the individual frames and you can I don't know if Deep Sky Stacker will stack according to the foreground. I doubt it. But you can manually stack those images in Photoshop and light them up according to the foreground. And then there's just sort of cut and paste, you know, the background of this image with the foreground of that image. But personally, I like the look of this. I think it draws more attention to the main target, which is the Milky Way here, and less attention to the foreground, which actually has a really cool sort of ethereal look to it and feel to it. So I like this, but to each his own. But that's really about all I did on the editing portion of this of this image here. And then you can save it as a TIFF or JPEG, you're good to go. So some key points to remember when you're imaging with a DSLR and a tripod, uh, lighting conditions are going to really go a long way with getting this kind of data. You know, again, I was imaging in a Bortle 2 sky over St. George Island, Florida. If you can get at least to a Bortle 3 or even 4, you can get similar results, maybe not quite as clean, but also the kind of lens you use will have an impact as well. If you're using, I was using a lens that had only a maximum aperture of f4. If you had something that had 2.8 or 2 or even 1.8, you're gonna capture that much more data over the that 15 second interval that I use. So I took images at 15 seconds, ISO 3200 at f4. If you did the same 15 second exposures at say f2, you're gonna capture even more detail than I did. And so lenses help with that as well, something to keep in mind. But yeah, guys, it's, it's very simple. There's no tracking involved in doing this kind of astrophotography. You can get really creative with your foreground shot and have some really cool Milky Way images just with a tripod and a DSLR. Guys, that's really about it. I hope you found the video helpful. And as always, I appreciate your support. I hope you find this video helpful. And also, I always, in all my videos, post links to uh, gear and hardware that I find most helpful to people both beginning in this hobby and seasoned amateurs looking to upgrade. So please check out my description if you're looking to get into this hobby, looking to get some gear to get you started on the right foot. So guys, as always, thank you for watching. God bless. Keep on looking up. Keep on seeking. And until next time, clear skies.